Hey everybody, it's me Lady Ada and last time I rapped at you I was talking about how I'm going to be helping judge the Hackaday Prize which is the Hackaday website contest to send somebody into space or just give them great prizes. Um, so we talked a little bit about introduction, introductions in the prize before but now I'll actually be doing a little bit of judging. So it's been a long journey. It's been a couple months now since we first started this and we're actually up to um, the finalists. We have five finalists that are going to uh, get voted on and we're going to publish the results tomorrow or the next day whenever you're going to see this. Um, but uh, before I actually do my final judging I want to just talk about each project and what I really liked about each project. All of them are just amazing excellent projects and I'll be going them in order um, starting with the Chip Whisperer, Sat Nogs, Ramen Pie, Portable SDR and Arducopter. That's not in any order of like bestness. It's just the order of, that you know came into my spread sheet so uh, probably some sorting ID number thing but um, let's start with the chip whisperer. So the chip whisperer is uh, what I thought was really good about this project is it's the most Hackaday-esque one. I mean it's like it's all hack. It's like hacks all the way down. Hacks on top of the hacks. This is an intense project, extremely technical. Um, it's a great hacking analysis tool. Um, this one is just like it's magical. Like, I didn't even realize that this stuff was possible um, doing glitch attacks on chips. I mean it's all theory but then um, you know this project actually brings it into reality and so that's what I thought that this this project was just so awesome. It was so magical and amazing and I totally want to get my hands on one and um, most importantly I think that uh, you know whatever the future is for this project you're going to be seeing a lot of um, cryptanalysis and firmware analysis that comes out of this project on Hackaday. So this is going to be like I, I can't wait till people get their hands on this and they totally start like cracking all these great chips and maybe like uh, crack some bootloaders and stuff. So the chip whisperer is like Awesome, extremely technical project, near to my heart. I really want one. Okay, next up is Satnogs. And um, this project is, I think, has a lot of soul to it. It's a very collaborative project. All these people showed up in the video, the final video, which is really great. And I can tell that it team worked together. And not only that, but it is the most, um, like, when you're talking about like a, a connected project, this is the most connected because it actually it's connect people together. It's not just that the, the it itself has internet access, but it actually brings people around the world together and connects them together, not only for their love of tracking satellites and grabbing data from them, but um, also like technically like they share data and there's like, you know, databases that they can they take shot like um, a data dumps from like the, the SDR and then upload them and analyze them. So I think that this one is, is super networked and also has the benefit of being the most space themed. I mean it is you know looking at space. Um, I think this project has the most like long term like global potential. I can see a lot of people doing this together. Um, I like that it combines you know, not just electrical engineering but also mechanical engineering and robotics and software and people who just really love to do like space exploration and space analysis. So I really like Satinogs, it's an excellent project as well. It makes me wish I had roof access because I would love to take part of it. Next up is the Raman Pi. This is a uh, Raspberry Pi powered uh, Raman spectroscopy per it was toss per, blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a device that lets you uh, look at um, the emissions from uh, pointing a laser at something and, and seeing how um, the laser affects like the, the spectrum, the light spectrum that emits off it. I don't actually completely understand it. Um, but I, I do understand this project is one of the most advanced um, like open source scientific analysis tools, which I think is really powerful. Um, another thing I liked about this project is that um, it's got everything. It's got Raspberry Pi, it's got 3D printing, it's got software, it's got data analysis, it can upload data and like share on a server. It's, it's got everything. It's probably better than most like Raman spectroscopers that you could buy you know through a scientific catalog and that's what is, I think like we're talking about like open, open source. This is where open source comes into. It's, it's about taking something that's already out there and making it better, making it open so people can use it. And I think that this is definitely the project that's going to be built by the most number of students. I'm going to see one of these in like every university within five years for sure. This is a powerful project and uh, I just love like the every maker technology is in there. All right, next up is the portable SDR. And um, this project is also kind of interesting because it takes the idea of connectivity to um, a lower level. This is actually like a connectivity device. It's meant for connecting people together. 
Um, it's a software defined radio, and so you can use it for you know voice or data communications. Um, some things that I really loved about this is um, I really like it when people take ham radio technology and kind of bring it into the maker movement. These are these are two movements that are a little separate, and I really think it's neat that you know this person had a lot of interest in radio and ham radio. And usually, you know, the maker groups and the SDR ham radio groups aren't is connected, but now they're starting to join up a little bit more. And so this is a nice mix of, you know, it's got a display and it's got this beautiful um, enclosure that was machined out of like a solid chunk of metal, um, a nice case, and there's software and there's an interface. And I, what I also like about this is that you can tell from the video and tutorial is that um, the, the creator of this project wants to use this product on a daily basis. This is, this is something that he created because he wanted to use this and he wants his friends to use it. So it definitely has a lot of heart in it and I can tell that this is like a labor of love. And I also think that because it's open source, this is one of the projects that will benefit most from having hacks and mods and a community of people because again, it's software defined radio. So the more firmware and examples you have, the more it can do. Um, so as this project you know, gets the, to the kit level and, and gets released out, um, to more people, I think you'll see a lot of really great projects that will make this a very powerful tool for all sorts of radio um, uses. Okay, and finally, we have the Arju Quarter Mini. Um, the Arju Quarter Mini is, uh, you know, definitely wins the prize for looking most like a product from Apple. Um, you know, I love the finished look of this. It's got like the capacitive touch wheel on it. And at first I was like, okay, what's the deal here? I mean, it's just like a couple sensor breakout boards. Like, what, you know, what, why is this so great? But, you know, as, as you start looking into the details of this project, there's so many details that um, the creator of this project put into it. And a lot, of these are, are these, the, a lot of them are details that get left off, like the user interface or having this like streaming to Plotly that's instantaneous. These are a lot of details that like hackers usually leave off. They usually don't do a, a beautiful user interface. It's dynamic. They don't usually have um, a touch wheel that that you know has icons and graphics. Um, it's it's that extra ninety percent, right? Because for the the technology part is ninety percent, and the user interface and usability is ninety percent. And I think that this is this project really shines because it, it's got that extra. 90% that makes it usable to non-hackers, right? Because a lot of these projects so far have been, they're, they're kind of meant for experts and scientists already. And this is the project that is meant for scientists to be. People who are interested in science or technology electronics, um, but want something user-friendly that they can get working and then maybe hack and modify. And so again, this, this is another one where I think once it gets into the hands of a lot of people, there'll be a lot of great firmware add-ons. So. Which is going to be the winner? I don't. I don't even know. They're all amazing projects. Um, they all deserve to win. Uh, but tune in shortly, and uh, we'll see the results of uh, all of the judges coming together and picking on what they think is the best. So, stay tuned. The winner of the Hackaday Prize. <laughs>